Hey guys! Today I'm going to be doing a review of the first half of the Lunar Chronicles. The Lunar Chronicles is a series of fairy tale retellings in a futuristic, very, very futuristic type world by Marissa Meyer. The first book in the series is Cinder, and this one, if you can't guess by the title, is a retelling of Cinderella. What makes this different from the original fairy tale is that Cinder is not an orphan girl, or at least not a normal orphan girl, she is a orphan cyborg. One day at work, Cinder meets Prince Kai of the entire region who's happened to stop by to get her to fix his android and finds out that life is about to get a little bit more complicated. Not only is there an awful plague spreading through New Beijing, but there are also aliens, or moon people, lunars, hence Lunar Chronicles. To start off my review, I'd like to say that I have never read a fairy tale retelling before, so I was very interested to see how someone would go about doing this. And I have to say, I absolutely love the world that Marissa Meyer came up with. It's fantastic. It's not old school at all, but it's very fast paced. A lot of technology, a lot of new advancements, just things go very quickly in this book. I also really, really enjoyed the reversal from typical fairy tales where the girl is kind of a weak damsel in distress who has to wait for her Prince Charming to come save her. In this book, it's the complete opposite. Cinder is an awesome, kick-ass character who's not afraid to challenge authority and kind of do whatever the heck she wants. I also really enjoyed the style of Marissa Meyer's writing. It's very, very easy to read, very easy to fly through several chapters at a time. That being said, I did have a hard time actually really connecting with this book past my admiration for Cinder. Prince Kai is described as this charismatic love interest for every girl in the entire, I don't know, empire? Is that what it is? But for me, that that never translated off the page. I never fell madly in love with Kai. I never felt like he was even worth pining over. Overall, that would be my greatest criticism of the book, that although I did fly through it when I was reading, it was really easy to put down. It was kind of weird. I was sort of immersed, but then at the same time, I felt like I could go in so far and then there was kind of this barrier keeping me out from being totally sucked into the story. Overall, I did enjoy the book though. I give it three stars and I'm curious to see how Cinder's story interweaves throughout the rest of the series. Next in the series comes Scarlet and this is a retelling of Little Red Riding Hood. Scarlet lives in a small town in France with her grandmother where they farm and deliver produce to local businesses. One day on her delivery rounds, she happens to meet the suspicious kind of mysterious man named Wolf, who is a fighter at a local fighting ring. Once Scarlet meets Wolf, he seems to start showing up everywhere in her life, including on her quest to find her grandmother, who's been missing for a couple of weeks. The police won't take her seriously, nobody will take her seriously, and she knows that it's up to her to rescue her grandmother, and Wolf seems surprisingly happy to help. I absolutely loved this book. I loved it so much more than Cinder. I felt completely engaged with the characters. I was drawn in from pretty much the first chapter, and I could not put this one down. Scarlet is such a lovable character. She's hot-headed, she knows what she wants, she's loud and proud, and I think a few other reviews that I read online mentioned her being spunky. Well, yeah, she's definitely got a little bit of spunk. I also found in Wolf everything that was missing in Prince Kai for me. He was broody, he was dark, he was mysterious, and by the way, he had big muscles and could kick people's butts. I did think it was very interesting the way that Marissa Meyer wove in Cinder's story with that of Scarlet, and that it didn't actually take away from Scarlet's story. I did realize something about Cinder though, and that is that she really freaking annoys me. I know a lot of you enjoy her character, but I'm sorry, she just so annoying. And that sucks, because she's kind of the main focus of the entire series. Somebody who surprised me though was Thorn. I did not think I was going to like him at all when he was first introduced, but I actually really, really liked him. I thought he provided good comic relief, and basically the only reason why I tolerated Cinder's parts of the book were because he also happened to be there. I'm hoping we find out a little bit more about him in the books to come, and I'm very, very glad that I decided to continue on with the series because seriously, this book kicked ass. Finally, I want to talk about the kind of short story that is technically 1.5 in the series, and that is The Queen's Army. There. That's better now. You can see it. The Queen's Army looks into the life of Wolf or Zev, Zev, however you say that, prior to Scarlet. 
prior to his becoming what he is in Scarlet, actually. I do think that it is important to mention that although it is numbered 1.5 in the series, I would not personally recommend that you read it before you read Scarlet. The mystery surrounding both Wolf's personality and his history and kind of physical state of being was really what made the book so exciting for me. So to have read the short story and know all of that, I don't know, to me that would have taken a lot away from the book. I would suggest to read Scarlet first and then go back and read the short story. Overall, I'm really enjoying this series. I'm glad it's starting to get better, hoping that I kind of start to enjoy Cinder more in the next book, but I'm really, really looking forward to them. All right, I hope you guys are having a great day. Let me know your thoughts about the series if you have read it already, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!